Well, this fandom's turned into a real shit show, hasn't it? Pedophiles everywhere. Dusky, performance, tune critic. Hell, even the man who's supposedly the new crusader against their kind has turned out to be a pedophile himself. But, unfortunately, we've seen a recent surge of people attempting to defend Anthony. Because, as always, this community is full of people who will blindly defend people even when the evidence is against them. Did you ever think the reason people in this fandom defend pedophiles is because some of them aren't actually pedophiles and there isn't any evidence to suggest that they are pedophiles? I mean, not everybody can be like you and shoot your mouth off saying somebody is a pedophile when they aren't a pedophile. Properly vetting claims is important. You shouldn't just go and shoot your mouth off and say, hey, that person's a pedophile without any evidence because that's slander, that's defamation, and that is completely wrong from a moral perspective. In light of that, and even recently, some people in my own chat room not fully understanding what pedophilia is, I've decided to go ahead and make a video going more in depth on the subject. This is likely to be my last pedophilia censored video. I've said countless times by this point that I'm not the pedo police. I'll tweet about and pass along information about pedophiles in the community, but that's it. I like the energy to make a pedo video every two fucking days. And honestly, I'm pretty sure most of my followers would get sick as fuck of that as well as stop paying attention, which is counterproductive in every way. So, without further ado, let's get right into it, shall we? Today I'm going to be citing excerpts from a book titled Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 5th edition, or as it is often abbreviated, DSM-5. It was written and published by the American Psychiatric Organization, which is currently the world's largest psychiatric organization. In the United States, this book functions as the principal authority for psychiatric diagnosis. In other words, if you're going to look somewhere for a definition on pedophilia, this is probably the book you turn to. And just our luck, pedophilia is listed under here, not in a law book, like some might have you believe. Because pedophilia itself is a medical condition, not a crime. But I digress. Oh god, this video went so south so fast. Um, pedophilia is both a crime and a medical condition, you do realize that, right? Diddling children is a crime, exploiting children sexually is a crime, harboring child pornography is a crime. How is pedophilia not a crime? And by the way, if pedophilia isn't a crime, why are you trying so hard to convince people that Anthony is a pedophile and ruin his career if it isn't a crime? It's both a crime and a medical condition, you retard. So I have to ask, what the fuck are you talking about? Let's delve into the criteria to see if someone like Anthony meets it. A. Over a period of at least six months, recurrent, intense sexually arousing fantasies, sexual urges, or behaviors involving sexual activity with a prepubescent child or children, generally 13 years or younger. This point is easy to misconstrue because of how jam-packed it is. So let me help you break it down. The person in question must display intense sexually arousing fantasies, sexual urges, or behaviors involving sexual activity with a child. Which is to say, at least one of these things, not necessarily all of them. Which means all you need to meet this criteria here is to have sexual fantasies about children. And yes, ERPs are, as Anthony says, just fantasy. For your sake, Vita, let's assume that Buttons and Anthony did engage in Star vs. the Forces of Evil erotic roleplay for six months. Wouldn't that technically make Buttons a pedophile too if we went by your logic? Because she was just as into this shit as Anthony was. She did not express any reprehension about doing it. She was gung-ho. She wanted to do it because she loved the character of Star Butterfly. She willingly participated in it, she didn't say no, I don't feel comfortable with this, I don't like this, this is too far, this is weird. If she had said that and Anthony persisted, then that would be a cause for concern, but they didn't really do that. But the fact of the matter is, from what I could gather, they didn't do that over a six month period, they only did it once. So I don't really understand how doing something like that once can make somebody a pedophile, or Ugh, God, this is so dumb. I, I, I don't understand why you need to do this. This is so dumb that I'm honestly surprised anybody takes you seriously. As for the generally 13 years or younger line, the word generally is important. They wouldn't have included it nilly-willy otherwise. So it's safe to say you could be attracted to slightly older children and still meet this criteria. The argument you're using completely falls apart because Buttons it was not underage. She was 19 and Anthony was 38. Yes, that is a huge age difference, but they were still both legal, consenting adults. Hell, he even admits this in the last chat log 
of the Star vs. the Forces of Evil erotic roleplay. And as we all know, legal consenting adults are 18 and over. If Buttons were underage and Anthony was doing this, then that would be a huge cause for concern, and you would be right. And I wouldn't even be making this video right now, but the fact of the matter is, they were both legal, so technically what Anthony was doing wasn't illegal. Even Buttons admits this herself. You've got the right idea, Vita, but you completely fucked up the execution. Nice job. B. The individual has acted on these sexual urges, or the sexual urges or fantasies caused marked distress or interpersonal difficulty. One could argue that by giving in an ERPing with someone in a sexual fantasy, he is giving in to his urges. Hell, I wouldn't in a heartbeat. But the second part of this is just as important. His sexual urges and fantasies have caused him distress and interpersonal difficulty. The fact that I'm clearly getting to him from how much he's been trying to attack me in any way he can shows that. The fact that he verbally attacks someone from his room and PMs for thinking he's a pedophile shows that. The fact that we're even here right now to do a massive back and forth with him and his loyal fans shows that. I don't think those are necessarily the hallmarks of a man that's guilty of pedophilia. I think those are the hallmarks of a man that's defending himself from people saying that he's a pedophile when he isn't. But, you know what, honestly, that's the least of this video's problems. So, no matter which portion of this criteria you look at, he fulfills it. That's two out of three so far. He'll be able to dodge this last one, right? C. The individual is at least 16 years and at least 5 years older than the child or children in Criterion A. Unfortunately, he falls victim to this as well. Anthony's age is, what? Pushing 40 at this point? Given Star is either 14 or 15 in the series, depending on what episode you're watching, and Anthony also was extremely into Button saying she felt 4, it's safe to say he meets his criteria as well. <sighs> okay, let me say it again since you obviously didn't get it the first time. Buttons was not underage. She was 19. She was a legal consenting adult. And if we went by your logic and the definition, Buttons would technically be a pedophile too. But even then, like I said, they're both legal consenting adults, so what they were doing was technically not illegal. And in terms of Anthony being supposedly turned on that Buttons mentally age regressed to the age of four. Four-year-olds do not have a concept of relationships, let alone sex. So for that to be proof of, haha, he's guilty, he's a pedophile, he totally diddles kids, makes no fucking sense. Like, oh my god. Ugh. The fact that you thought this was a legitimately good response is beyond me. This is the point where many people would jump in and say, but it's just a fantasy, not actual kids. Unfortunately for them, however, the first and second criteria clearly includes fantasies in the diagnosis process and make it very clear that these fantasies don't need to transfer over to reality to be sufficient to diagnose someone as a pedophile. Trying to justify the behaviors by stating it's only fiction is an attempt to create a pointless arbitrary exception to a qualified medical organization's in-depth explanation of a serious mental disorder. You would have a point if Anthony actually engaged in sexually erotic roleplay involving underage characters for a period of six months, but he didn't. From what I could gather, and I combed all over the fucking internet, the star erotic roleplay was the only erotic roleplay involving underage characters that he did. All of the other erotic roleplays that he engaged with, Buttons, were involving characters that were not underage. If you have any evidence that he did more sexually erotic role plays involving underage characters that I don't know about, please send them my way because I would love to see them, but I highly doubt you actually have any evidence of this given the flimsy arguments you've presented so far. This is so stupid. This is profoundly stupid. In fact, they should just call you Vita beyond stupid. Somebody please, for the love of God, end my suffering. Basically, what I'm getting at is, reels before feels, bitch. Oh, and on a bit of a lighthearted note, I just wanted to include this bit from the DSM on one way to find pedophiles, which basically amounts to showing them kitty porn, just to see if they get hard or not. They then immediately follow up by telling the medical professionals who tend to read this that possessing child porn is, in fact, illegal. And they really shouldn't do that if they don't want to get people in the association arrested. 
What is it that people say about warnings on products? If there's a really dumb fucking warning that means someone's tried it before? Doctors and scientists are fucking crazy sometimes, am I right? I know most people by now know what pedophilia actually is, but there's a very vocal minority of people who try to insist it's only limited to child molesters. I've never heard anyone say that pedophilia is exclusively a child molester thing because it isn't. Anyone can be a pedophile. Regardless of age, race, and sexual orientation, it doesn't matter. Anyone can be a pedophile. It's not exclusively a child molester thing. This is quite possibly the dumbest thing you've said in this video, and you've said a lot of really dumb shit. And is therefore a legal claim as opposed to a medical one. So those people will go on about their life defending a pedophile tooth and nail. Some people defend pedophiles because they're friends and they refuse to turn on one of their own. Some people defend pedophiles because they're unaware as to the actual definition of what a pedophile is, due to the misinformation in circulation by the ill-informed. You can convince either with enough effort, but my goal with this video is to help educate the latter group of people. If people continue defending Anthony after I cite the American Psychiatric Organization, well, they've thoroughly blinded themselves to the truth and are beyond any hope of convincing. I defend Anthony because I believe there is no evidence to suggest that he is a pedophile in any way, shape, or form. If I thought he was a pedophile, I wouldn't be defending him. I take claims of pedophilia very seriously, but at the same time, I'm not going to go out there and shoot my mouth off and say somebody is a pedophile when they aren't a pedophile. That's a terrible thing to do. That is a recipe for disaster. Because if it's proven that the person you're calling a pedophile isn't actually a pedophile, it can have huge repercussions. Just look at what happened to Pentagon in stories after the whole Spockter theory debacle. They're doomed to a life of defending pedophiles and all the misery that will bring on themselves and others going forward. While I originally started writing this video to refute things people have been saying that are easy enough to refute with just good old common sense, it's become a bit more than that and I hope this video will serve as a useful guide for people going forward. So, next time someone insists a pedophile isn't a pedo just because he hasn't actively molested a child, tell them to fuck off and read the DSM-5 definition. Neither you or I can force them to change their mind. However, considering our points are supported by world-renowned medical professionals, and they're just sitting there blindly defending pedophiles, we're going to be just fine, and they'll only end up hurting themselves in the long run. Eventually, the brony fandom will dissolve, and they'll be forced into other communities where that sort of thing isn't tolerated nearly as much. You can only deny reality so much before it catches up to you, and when it does, it won't show the slightest bit of care for any of the self-imposed illusions you may have. In short, this video is garbage. It is not only one of the worst responses I've ever seen, but it is quite frankly one of the worst videos I've watched in 2018. It's that fucking bad. A lot of the arguments in this video were either flawed, flimsy, or downright dumb. And considering how long it took for this video to come out, and trust me, it's been in the works for a while, it still ended up feeling rushed. It honestly felt like Vita didn't really have anything substantial to pin on Anthony, so he was more like, oh shit, I need to make a video against Anthony, but I don't really have any substantial evidence proving that he's a pedophile. Let me just call him a pedophile anyway, because that works so well for Lily, Pete, and Buttons. It'll work well for me. People will totally believe that Anthony's a pedophile, even though anyone with a functioning brain will realize that he's not a pedophile. Vita, let me give you a word, let me give you some advice. Um, if you're going to call somebody a pedophile, you gotta do better than this, man. You actually have to provide substantial evidence, you have to properly vet claims, and you have to look into the situation to determine whether someone is a pedophile before calling them a pedophile, because if you call someone a pedophile when they're not a pedophile, that's slander, that's defamation, and on top of all that, you just look like a goddamn idiot. And trust me when I say this, nobody on the internet wants to look like an idiot. To be honest with you, I don't think this was about pedophilia. I don't think it was ever about that. I think you're just using the pedophilia as an excuse uh, to justify your hate boner for Anthony. I swear you're almost channeling Lily Pete in that regard, and it's incredibly obvious when you watch this video. You can call me a pedophile sympathizer all you want, that still doesn't change the fact that this response was complete and utter shit. 
And honestly, if you want to keep calling people pedophiles that aren't pedophiles because you, you're so eager to out the next pedophile, then by all means, go ahead and do it. But you'll just look like a fucking idiot in the process, and when that happens, I'll just be rubbing my hands together like Birdman, because that shit would be hilarious. Anyways, that's all I gotta say. This is Nat Douglas, aka the Hero, and until next time, remember to stay frosty and keep it weird.